Welcome back, folks, to the console relegations. This time, I'll be joined by the illustrious Taco. We've got two more teams coming at you. Era Eternity versus Null and Void. This is the other side. At this point, we'll see everybody, and then we're going to mix and match it a little bit. So as I said, the next matchup will be Null and Void taking on Era Eternity. And then after that, we've got Era taking on Chan, the team we just saw lose to Kaz. And Era Eternity is another one of those teams where they've got a little bit of experience from the SEL, so they really need to come out here with a strong, positive kind of matchup, considering that they really need to show that they have had improvement. Yeah, I mean, these teams have, uh, they've got to defend their spot. And we're going to see just how well they'll do that as we get into the game in a little bit. But what are you looking for particularly out of these teams? Uh, I think more so I want to see a little bit more experience on the side of Air Eternity. This is really the team that has had the chance to compete against the top of the crop SEL team. So when you have that sort of experience, it should be a little bit, a little bit easier as far as developing a draft that can play towards your style. So let's get into picks and bans right away for game number two. Null and Void taking on Era Eternity. Here we are. First ban coming out, Freya. Nobody really wants to see her be <laughs> played anytime soon. Not really any surprises. I would also kind of anticipate kind of standard bans. Odin seems to be a very prevalent one, especially on the side of console. It's just all too easy to run rampant, and there he is already taken off the table. Yeah, he's uh, very powerful, not just aggressively, but also defensively. A lot of healers like to be selected in our current meta, and he kind of shuts them down. Scotty, also very strong, the ability-based hunter, just taken off of the table. And the Robin, we saw how effective he was in the last match, so taken off as well by Null and Void. Era Eternity, with their first pick, goes Geb. And that's a that's a very strong priority insta like get pick. I mean, you've got to be feeling really confident. A lot of teams seem to be valuing that cleanse that he has on the shield and just his survivability aspect. However, this leaves Era a little bit susceptible to aggro drafts at the start and already Sun Wukong Terra. That's yeah. pretty strong picks all around. Yeah, you talk about aggressive strategies in Sun Wukong and Terra. They're interesting because they're both defensive characters when you think warrior and guardian. But Sun Wukong and Terra certainly bring the pain. Arlong Shen, though, will be the selection by Era Eternity. Interesting choice. I feel like Arlong is uh, right in the middle. I, I feel as though Erlong is undervalued, if anything. He seems like an incredibly strong soul laner or even jungle, jungle aspect, which is what we might be seeing here from Era, taking the warriors into the jungle page out of... I mean, everybody's kind of just been doing oh, yeah. it lately. It's it's no reason not to, but love the response by by the other team, though, however, going for the more again. Yeah. Uh, Null and Void will be selecting Morgan Likely for the middle lane, although she can jungle. We've seen her in a majority of in, in a number of positions. It's just about who can actually pilot her. She's one of the harder characters in the game to play because you have to be able to play everybody else in the map. So we'll see if this one actually going to work. Second round of bans. We say goodbye to Kronos and we say goodbye to the Bat. Null and Void with their last ban. A kind of a smart smart decision by Null and Void, however, taking away that hell removes a lot of possible pressure in that mid lane. And even when a team with hell falls behind, they still have that slight bit of possibility to come back. And Morgan's all about punishing positioning. Can't really do that when the enemy team is a healer. What I like what I like a lot as Null and Void lock in Circuit here is how much attention both teams play, paid to the Morgan. You ban off the hell of the Kronos, which are problematic gods by themselves, but Hell, uh, Morgan's not going to get too much by turning into those characters. Those are characters that have to stay on the map for a long time, longer than Morgan's going to be able to transform. And then Era Eternity, they take away two junglers that can be problematic when doubled up. So that's going to be a nice look in the ban phase. Sol and Jingwei finish up the picks for Era. Era are going to have to keep in mind, though, that Null and Void will have that Morgan turn into any character from their team. So having that god pull selection between the Erlong, the Bologna, there's your team fighting possibilities. Even Geb can get them out of a tight spot. Yeah, the circuit, the double circuit. We've seen that before in the Pro <laughs> League. Uh, Captain Twig and his mid lane are pretty prime, like to play that one. We'll see if Null and Void can do their best impression as we get into this one. Era Eternity versus Null and Void live here at SCL Relegations. Right now. And didn't really get a chance to touch on it, but Artemis, seeing an Artemis being picked up 
yet again. Yeah. I'm actually really satisfied seeing this change because with the buff to crit items and Devourer's Gauntlet, it makes it all too easy to prioritize an Artemis. She can suffer a little bit early on because she doesn't have too much escape, but when you pair her alongside of a Terra, that's plenty of lane clear, plenty of lane pressure, and Artemis is just going to be strong in general with these itemization choices. Yeah, I like the change. Uh, basically, a lot of the changes that we saw enabled basic attack hunters to really look towards uh, towards the next level. We get to see the Devo Gloves come out last match, and ex items like Executioner were increased as well, which only helps the characters like Artemis, and we saw just how well Atonement was able to use her last game, so I'm pretty eager to see if uh, Nolan Void will be able to do the same thing. For me, it's all about that crit passive. It's going to make things really difficult for that for Lizer on the current to try and box him out just because he's going to have to keep in mind there's the RNG passive from Artemis and that's probably the scariest part of her kit when crit's already so strong. A little bit of an invade coming out from Era Eternity here. Waiting for the moment into Sir Ket, looking for the last hit on that big boy, of course. And Hunbats is here as well. Everybody fighting for it. I got my monkey wrong, that Sun Wukong. But the blue buff does ultimately get taken down, and so does the Sun Wukong. Rogue T on the Bologna, starting things off hot in that blue buff corner. And that's the risk of trying to contest against two warriors early on. If you don't secure that blue buff, enemy teams hitting level two. I, in that circumstance, I would have preferred to see Null and Void just fall back. You're not going to typically be yeah. able to out-secure that from an Erlong Shen and a Bologna. Yeah, you got to sit in the back line and just wait for that last hit. As I said, we, we saw the Sarkat just kind of hang back. If Daimyo just sits in the corner, and then waits to go for the zigzag at the last moment. And then whether or not, or not it works out, you get out of there, no problem. But don't go for the fist fight with the two warriors. That doesn't wind up going well. Blue buff goes to Rogue T. The invade is successful. And we see the first blood go that way. So already a nice look for Era Eternity. Worst part is Overpower didn't even need to use his horrific emblem because of the positioning for the Sun Wukong. Just absolutely no escape from that pit of death in the blue buff. And pretty easy lead already established for Era Eternity. But that's the invade that you want to see coming from an experienced team. And that's the sort of thing that not only the uh, the play, because they had the confidence to really go for it, but also the, the next step, making sure to go ahead and look for the farm in the jungle after the fact and go ahead and pick up this lane. Now see a little bit of a lead already for Rogue Key. Bane wants to go back again. Nothing wrong with that either, but... I, I can't see a Sun Wukong going toe-to-toe -to -toe very well with the Bologna. Sun Wukong, by far one of the soul laners who really needs that blue buff, levels one through five. He's just so mana hungry. And even with his Kondral, it's going to be incredibly difficult for him to try and out-clear the Bologna. Right now, Era Eternity already find themselves up 1,000 gold. Just 500 from that first blood, then a little bit extra from the jungle. Gonna make some moves very soon. Level four on this goat man. I mean, he's gonna be very scary as he just starts to last hit and tries to strip as much experience and gold away from the enemy in his lane. That's the best choice when you know that you're getting out pressured as a hunter. You should just last hit the creeps. That way it forces the wave to push up as far as possible. So you don't have to really go, you don't have to overextend in order to farm as much as, as your opposition. Very important play there. 300 gold above the Artemis already is Elizer. And that's just because of the fact that Compromise has been splitting a lot of these waves with his support, but it's we've seen the Gev making multiple rotations. He's been hovering around this mid lane territory for a while, and I, I like this mindset for the Gev, but it could actually be turning against her Duckbot right now, so he's trying to disapparate and get out of there, but the same can't be said for Tyler K. Stun for stun, but Tyler's going to avoid it with a stun of his own, beautifully timed, although I don't even know if he's expecting the Bologna to come through with Aroma Invicta. Just sort of a luck of the draw, but Tyler's not done just yet. Saved by the big man with the taunt. Wonderful play by overpowered USB. That was a dead geb if the taunt doesn't come out by OP USB. Beautiful Erlong Shen rotation, and that's exactly what this team needed. Overpowered, ensuring that a support player gets to stay alive another day. And Granted, it wouldn't have been the first blood, but it's just the fact of not having your support fall behind so early on, and now he gets the invade for free on top of that.
Well, it's it's also just keeping the lead, right? I mean, we saw our eternity go up, and if Tyler falls down here, then all of a sudden you're just sort of giving away a little bit of what you've taken so far. Now our eternity able to save the Geb, they're just sort of pushing forward. So nice plays coming out from EE, and they're going to look to continue just doing their thing. Everything having been expended for Null and Void just makes it so that Air Eternity has all the time in the world to look for that global farm and the enemy's farm, more importantly. That's the key. Null and Void, though, able to secure those oracles. That's going to be really important. Try and prevent overpowered USB from making those rotations on the Erlong Shen to potentially punish this very immobile Artemis. Yeah, and that's... that's one of the things that you're looking for when you're playing the Artemis, as you see, she was uh, the first character to drop a ward on the map. And yeah, sure, she was dropping the ward over there. And she dropped the ward on the left side of the uh, mid lane to make sure that her cat wasn't going to come around from the back side. But my point remains is that the Artemis is the one that needs to be watching her back. So definitely want to keep an eye on that one. Ward dropped by Tyler K. She watches the left side harpies go the way of Nolan Void. Eric Turney still looking strong. Pretty standard three-man splitting of the farm in the mid lane. I, I actually like what Airy Eternity have opted to do here. Since Compromise has been hanging around this solo lane more often, it's giving him a little bit more XP since he's only two-man splitting at the most in comparison to Nolan Void, who've been three-manning a lot of these mid waves and just the farm that they've gone to in general. And that's allowing him just sort of to, to stay uh, basically where he wants to be. So nice stuff over there as far as the right side of the map. Quite a different story two-level lead for Rogue T. And when you're the one that's able to get the blue buff invade off cooldown, that's exactly where you need to be. Rogue is probably going to start making a pretty heavy impact once the Gold Fury dances start to happen. It's going to be really difficult for Bane to really try and jump into that in the same sense, considering that Rogue just having a little bit more gold means that you get the defense item up first. Damage onto the Sun Kong big time, but it's all a pain as the jungler shows up as well. Madness zigzag and the ultimate into the tower. Not going to be enough to kill, but here come the cavalry. Their eternity show up. The taunt's good. Two players into the stun. Bologna shows up again, and the hammer comes down, but now Terra's here. Rogue re-engaging. Not a good idea. Double un for the monkey man. Bane with the two. And overpowered USB's got to watch himself now. That's going to bring Sun Wukong right back into this one, folks. Just 50 gold shy of the tie in that solo lane. Experience nice and matched. Just when you think that you're going to get the upper hand and the counter engage, Null and Void answers back. And that was a beautiful counter to the counter. Yeah. They knew the police was coming, so immediately rounded up what little bit they had and made sure to just push everybody underneath the tower. That was still just a little bit too much commitment from Area Eternity at too early of a standpoint in the game. I, just, I, I didn't like Rogue rejoining that team fight. He got out of there, he did some damage, and your teammates saved you. Good for you. We saw Era before do the same thing where Tyler got in some trouble, they saved him and they walked away. Null and Void saved the Bologna, but Bologna re engaged. And all of a sudden, you're handing a player a double kill. I mean, Bane's not complaining out of everybody that was involved in that little skirmish on the solo lane side. It, it just makes it even better for him. Able to secure a blue buff as well. And now it's going to be Rogue again Ooh. being aggressed onto. Caught by that last little bit of the taunt. Put into the Sarket Poison. Still trying to make it out underneath this tower, but just not enough time for Null and Void to fully commit to that kill. Still going to be a nice look as Rogue will, have to, will be forced to back here. No teleport, but he has the swift wing, of course. And anytime you're able to push somebody out of way, out of lane, you're looking good, feeling good. That actually will secure the tie over there in the solo lane, technically giving the lead to Bane. There it is. It's a little bit more experience on the side of the monkey as he's able to push some of those members under, or excuse me, some of those minions under the tower. And that's just the turnaround that you want to see, but not if you're Era Eternity. Sun Wukong is already pretty difficult to deal with, which is probably why we've been seeing Overpowered hang around this side of the map so much, really trying to shut him down. And that's going to be Sir Duckbot in a little bit of trouble. And Shockwave is going to be good from Tyler K, but a kind of nice caught out of position. Side. Beautiful knockup by Overpowered into the Soul Ultimate. And the taunt's going to be good too, and Ollie's in trouble, but Tusky stops everybody in their tracks. Era Eternity can't follow up. They get one kill, and it's going to be Daimyo the jungler falling down. 
Tyler K might not have necessarily been in the best positioning at the start of that, but his cataclysms have been absolutely on point this game. Yeah, he's been able to use them offensively and defensively. This time, obviously, being a little bit problematic. Look at the itemization from our two hunters. Devo Gloves just finished right now from the Artemis. She'll have to spend some time stacking that up. Whereas across the way, the hunter half a level above her and 700 gold above her. Started the stacking on it before boots and finds himself almost finished. Can never really count an Artemis out of a boxing match though, as long as she's got that crit passive. Really good looks though for the Kern already having so much lane dominance because it leaves his team more open for looking at the gold fury. I mean, he's a thousand gold up right now. That's got to be a strong look, especially as we move into the mid game, where really that's his that's his wheelhouse. The Artemis is going to be a little bit stronger later on, but this mid game when Kernanos really starts to just swing that's very dangerous to allow him to be this far up he finally all this time that he's just kind of been by himself just giving him all that farm that he needs but speaking of farms gonna be ollie trying to get out of dodge now boral has come through from compromise but just nobody to follow up on that one a little bit of a tricky play from yc the morgan trying to make players think that there's a flank coming but she just sort of retreated that's kind of the fun of that uh that Invisibility. You see the Morgan standing there. Okay, she's invisible, but where is she? Am I gonna get blown up? I'd like to see a pool from Air Eternity with the Boral being down because it's probably one of the more chaotic factors for yeah. team fights on Nolan Void's turf. So without that Boral being available, and here it is, Air Eternity kind of just hovering around this side of the map now. They want the Oracles. They might push for more. I think they're gonna play it safe here. Overpowered USB gonna walk forward. He's gonna get taunted actually. And a little bit of damage from the Death Bane, but not too big of a deal as he's able to sort of turtle his way out of there. One of the downsides for Overpowered on this Erlong Shen is that he doesn't have a CC immune ultimate for a lot of the CC that you would want to be able to immune from Nolan Void. You've got the Cobra's Kiss from Sir Cat, her taunt on top of that Boar ultimate from Artemis. So if he's not careful when he tries to go in and look for that damage setup and play the utility factor, Overpowered could very well get turned up. We've seen it work so far. Let's see if it continues to, however. Quite a different story. Practice versus reality. Right now, our 2v2 in the mid lane features jungle in mid for Null and Void and support in mid for Air Eternity. The soul here on Sir Duckbot, certainly a different idea or mindset from what we saw last game. Last game, we saw him in the Hunter role buying a Warlock Sash. This time, mid lane with a Bancroft. Bancroft is just the way to go if you're a soul in the mid lane. Sure, you can maybe play a little bit more greedy, look for that Book of Thoth Rush or the Warlock Sash, but on a god like Soul, you just benefit so much more from rushing a Bancroft. You get the power spike that you're looking for, a little bit of life steal, which goes great with her in hand auto attacks, and everything else on top of it, it's just all around a very strong item for her. That's the key, is that you're used to your basic attacks a lot. When you talk mages and you talk Bancroft, you're, you're never really talking lifesteal. It's just sort of a bonus. You're only getting one third of that because of the fact that all your abilities are AOE. Well, when you're shoving out basic attacks the way a soul does, you're actually realistically benefiting from that lifesteal. So an item that I personally love because it's very, very inexpensive and brings you 100 power plus some if you go down so uh, below health threshold. So I like that play. Vision coming out for the guys on Nolan board on the left side of the map, and everybody from Aaron knows it. Compromise could definitely tell something was up with the way that the wave was just being hovered about, overpowered, was trying to look for a potential gank. Now they're just looking for that ward clearing. Possible ganks? Mm, we'll see. Definitely going to keep an eye on that. As we saw as soon as the ward went down, Aaron was pinging it on the map. Hey, hey, there's a ward here. We got to take care of this. And that's exactly what they do. Rogue walking in the enemy jungle, 1v2. It's the speed buff that seems to be the mindset for Overpower, but he could have found himself in a lot of danger. It's going to be the Geb Shield Cleanse getting him out of that one, but Sir Duckbot and Overpower are both caught up in the middle of an entire team from Nolan Void. And there's still trouble for the soul, jumped on by the jungler and jumped on by Bane. Third kill for the Sun Wukong. Rogue T got to the fight late because he was trying to do the speed buff. Not a good look for Era Eternity's solo laner. 
And their lead being cut short, formerly 1,500, now getting closer to that 1,000 mark. The Terra Clap was absolutely beautiful, as well as the Artemis Trap follow-up. Those two just had so much combined chemistry, and the way that they were able to set up their team for not only securing that team fight, but, oh, actually, it is going to be Lizer stealing away those oracles. Yep. Not able to really secure them. Close, but no cigar, as they say. The Hun Bats is going to become more and more scary as time goes on. We'll see this one work out. Second item, Spear of Desolation. Interesting choice here for the mid lane Morgan. I, I don't feel too much surprised by this Spear of Deso rush. I, I think that a lot of players would assume that it could provide a ton of damage and early penetration that could be important. But what's important right now is using that Aegis already burned out from the Morrigan. Air Eternity is certainly going to keep that one in mind. The damage was there to take care of the Morgan, but Era Eternity played very carefully and didn't want to overextend. They pushed the mid laner out, looking for the gold for themselves. 25% on the objective. Leashed out, but now looking towards Null and Void. There comes Tusky, and Rally over here says Rogue T looking to push out, no compromise. Successfully will do so. The gold Fury picked up one more time, and the guys on Era Eternity on the backside. Down it goes. Big boy play coming out for the blue team. And now they're looking to clean up with the resulting team fight. Big slam coming out from Rogue T. That makes up the jealousy on the speed buff. He'll take that one and walk all the way to the right side of the map, looking for the portal team. The Bologna and Arlong weren't even looking for the Morrigan in that scenario. He just happened to be yeah. there. He was trying to stealth through, see if he could maybe steal away the Gold Fury, but just too much damage. That burst and shred on the objectives. That's what you get when you have a Soul and a Kerninus on your side. Just incredible ability to take down the objectives. The basic attacks coming through and swinging. And again, you want to talk about the lead between our two hunters. The Kerninos, almost 2,000 gold, 1,600 to be a little bit more specific, above that art. Having a full executioner already building at the crit, which I'm kind of anticipating to be the poison star that's been so prevalent lately for Hunter players. And that why, is, why just, is that? It, it's the slows. It has a beautiful passive. It, when poison star had that 20% slow that was added on, as well as just the fact that it has increased crit chance, it makes it a heavy priority because of how cheap that crit item is. Very easy to build, very utility based, and can potentially let your team put out so much damage. Sir Duckbot warming up, and there it is. Too hot. And down goes the mid lane tower. 500 gold in the pocket for the tier one. And the Era Eternity stretched their lead out even more so. 17 17 on the clock, seven kills. Era only earned three of them in comparison to Null and Void's four, but it's all about the gold here, folks. 3,000 gold in the lead, give or take, for Era Eternity. What's been important for Era Eternity has been the objective secure immediately after winning a team fight. Null and Void has had some very strong looks as far as securing kills are concerned, but after the kills come through, nothing else seems to happen on the map, and exactly. that's kind of where the experience factor comes into play. You're, you can't, there's, whenever you're in a fight, Whenever you're in a team fight in Smite, let's specify that, you always have to think, why are we doing this? Why are we fighting? If you're fighting in the enemy jungle, when the jungle camps are down, I mean, good for you. Maybe you'll get some gold for killing some folks, but it's really about the stuff after the stuff. You want to find those objectives after you take down the opposition, because if there's nothing to gain, and why are you doing it in the first place? I mean, Air Eternity, as soon as they secured that Gulf Fury, what did they immediately do afterwards? They pushed up that mid lane. They looked for the T1 tower. They looked for the portal demon. Everything that's available on the map, Air Eternity tries to take. And that's probably the biggest difference between these experienced oh, SCL yeah. teams and the up and coming ones that are trying to work their way in through relegations. That's that's the absolute key. And that's what you get when you're playing, when you're playing routinely against a higher end clientele. That is the Smite Console League. Null and Void trying to fight their way into it. Era Eternity trying to keep them out by way of defense. And so far, looking pretty strong. Era Eternity certainly putting up a good fight. And everybody from Null and Void is either in base or on the right hand back. Harpies leaving their T1 tower completely open. Era Eternity more than happy to pocket another 500 gold. Yeah, just cleaning up. Here's Trouble, the dash forward, looking for the circuit. Previously, you'd run away from the circuit, but at this point, sure. 
She's level 13. It's a level 16 below to dash right on in there. Why not? And now the push for the real objectives is about to happen. These T2 towers, there's still one T1 remaining in the duo lane side, but with only a lone Artemis looking to try and defend, I can't see the stand for much longer. However, the rest of Nolan Void recognizing a little bit of danger for their hunter, starting to make their way over. Five-man group. Rogue trying to zone and play defense to make sure nobody gets the flank from around the backside from the jungle. Here comes the wave, and it'll be pushed underneath the tower. Damage is good from Duckbot, but he'll take damage from the tower itself. Half HP for the mid-mage. Duckbot's going to have to keep an open eye out for the circuit. That's really what the rest of his team is even trying to feel for. You can see Tyler K kind of turning around, checking their backsides, checking their flanks. Never really safe around that 70% threshold when there's a circuit lurking about, but Rook Rogue. T already making the engagement. Bringing the fight to the enemy. Null and Void gets stunned out. There's going to be trouble as the Artemis pops down the Tusky, but the shell is good, and a huge ultimate from Kurnu Naus. The damage coming out from the Hunter still on the tower. Love the attention to the objective. Let the team take care of the fight while he takes care of the business. Trouble is, nobody died. Maybe they needed the Kurnos damage right after the ultimate. Null and Void played strong defense. And they're able to stand their ground. Both of those shells from Bane and from Ollie just came up absolutely clutch for Null and Void, ensuring that nobody on their team died. However, they can't hold off this tower forever, especially not with the Geb shields to ensure that Air Eternity is healthy enough to tank it up. So, so the, the like, you know, the, the armchair coach in me, the, the analyst in me loves that play. Toss out the Cardinals ult, you play sort of defense, and then you're only paying attention to the tower. Hold this conversation as the Gold Fury is leashed because of the flight coming out from the Sun Wukong. Bird form instead of Ox. I don't know if you meant to do that one. But the Gold Fury won't find its way into Era's pockets this time around. Now, my comment was, I liked how Cardinals threw out the ultimate and then focused on the tower. But we saw players, so many players, alive with about 15, 28, 20% HP. Was that the right choice for Cardinals to stick on the tower instead of going for the team fight? Most definitely, because if the current looks for the team fight, it's it's pretty easy to get turned on when you don't have that objective damage coming through. The tower is basically a six man for a team whenever yeah. an enemy team is trying to siege underneath it. And even though Nolan Void were getting kind of low, they still had the Terra heals kind of going on in the background, which means that Air Eternity only gets one member with the additional boost of the Geb Shield. And that's temporary. So if you hover around that T1 for too long, everybody's going to eventually fall so low that it won't even matter how low the enemy team is if you're just as depleted of health. Well, the tier one tower does eventually go down. And so that's even more gold on the side of Era Eternity. Make no mistake, though, Null and Void's still very much in this. If Compromise had the same amount of gold as Lizer yeah. and had a crit item for that siege, that team fights Null and Void's every time. Really? I think so. I 100% I believe so because Area Eternity were actually falling relatively low because even though crit builds are great against the enemy team as sure. far as damage is concerned, not so great when it comes to taking out these towers and phoenixes. Yeah, that's the key. Now, what they, they're they great at taking out the Gold Fury and the Fire Giant. Yes. So you trade out a little bit here, a little bit there. Terra Ultimate used as everybody tried to escape the middle of the map. And it looks like that'll be successful. Little bit of concern that somebody might have been in a spot they couldn't get out of, but knowing that Terra Ultimate won't be available, Air Eternity already grouping up and looking for the next siege, and Gold Fury seems to be their next target. Definitely want to keep players off of it, zoned out. Geb Shield on to Rogue, who's going to take a little bit of poke from Bane. But half HP on the Gold Fury, and look at all that damage. Very quickly falling down. Here comes Ali charging forward. Era secure it nonetheless. Big plays coming out from the Hunter. The dash forward from the Warrior, gonna keep control. Not a great ult coming out from Geb, however, and YCTO gonna punish him for it. Down, goes overpowered USB. Could be the same for the Geb, right on top. Bane with the kill, two for nothing. Null and Void so far, Arrow was able to get the objective, but the team fight looks to be all NNV as Compromise takes down Duckbot. Lizer 
goes down next. It's almost a team wipe. Rogue gets home safe, but null and void with the punish for the Gold Fury. And right now is where the play really needs to come through. Null and Void have to dead set, go straight for that Fire Giant. Compromise trying to heal up a little bit in this mid lane. I can't blame him for that one. He's probably going to have to be the one to initially pull this FG, and so he wants to ensure that his team is there, but no, it's going to be the Portal Demon lookout. That's going to be their priority, and I don't know how to feel about this call. I'm not a fan. Really? I'm I, not a fan I, of You got to take what you can get. What would you, I mean, they go ahead, they secure it. Rogue T's in trouble, he's rooted, he's dashed. And a couple more shots will take him down. Daimyo gets the credit for the kill. What would you have rather seen? Just the straight up fire giant. They have Ooh. more than enough damage to secure that. Sun Wukong was healthy enough to tank it alongside the Artemis and they could have, I mean, it, it works out in the long run because Rogue ends up dying trying to contest the portal demon. So per perhaps they were that concerned about the Bologna out securing that fire giant or causing enough damage to kill them on top of that objective. But for the most part, Bologna really isn't going to interfere against a four man squad mm -hmm. and the rotation wouldn't have been there in time. I you know what I, I think I'm with you as well. I think the damage from Nolan Floyd absolutely would have been able to take out the fire giant. I think that goes ahead and fire giant kind of neutralizes this lead that Era Eternity have. They're able to make the play and don't forget the fire giant's gonna disrupt Rogue T as well. Artemis destroys objectives. She just she obliterates Fire Giant yeah. and Gold Fury. Going for the super safe play, though, I, I can't blame Nolan Void entirely for that one. That is kind of just the, we want to make sure that we're not losing anything. Ex exactly. But I, I think what it is is this game has been a very mental... This game, if you turn off your scoreboard at the top, Era Eternity are crushing Nolan Void so hard. Almost every team fight is going Blue's way. And then you turn everything on, and especially after the last team fight, you go, wait a second. We're only down 3K, guys. And I feel like they didn't even realize that they were not as at not at as big of a disadvantage as it might have felt on their side of the battlefield. Either way, Sir Duckbot taking a little bit of poke from that fire giant. Yeah. Gotta love those yeah. FG knockups if you're not careful and Nolan Void, I think with the Morgan, the mentality here, because he's been utilizing this stealth pretty efficiently. YC has been trying to maneuver around that back line, almost working like the Circuit, just trying to ensure if he can lock down one member, at least with his stun, then everything else can follow up afterwards. That's what we've seen out of successful Morrigans uh, throughout the course of her career here in the SPL. We've seen, obviously, the double up of strong ultimates. We talk about the console league specifically. I always bring it back to Michael Checo's team. The double Neath into the Al Kwong nonsense. Uh, you take a look at double uh, double Sir Cat that I brought up in the pro league on the PC side of things. But there's also that damage coming out by way of Mage Assassin. That's what brought, I mean, talking about PC again, look at the finals of DreamHack uh, last summer finals. That basically brought the team a victory to bring them back into the fight. So that Mage Assassin that YCTO is piloting on the Morgan is absolutely a part of her kit. And we always talk about the clonage, but you gotta think about the fact that she can just delete people. And exactly. And right now, both of these teams kind of just dancing around this fire giant portion of the map, really trying to ensure that Air Eternity want to keep that lane pressure alive. That's always good looks for your team, having the minion waves pushed up for your side. But Nolan and Void, I love what they're doing as far as not overextending just yet, just trying to secure what's on their side as far as Ward Vision is concerned. Nolan and Void have done a decent job trying to ward here. But Air Eternity, have you noticed how many centuries this team is buying? Every time Null and Void put a ward down and Air Eternity are aware of it, it just gets immediately taken away. That's exactly what you need to look out for, though. Centuries are what matter right now. Yeah. You can get the regular wards, and there are a couple of places that you might be able to afford putting them down without them getting removed immediately. But centuries are what's going to make the difference here for Air Eternity and Null and Void, because everyone is buying a century pretty much on each of their backs. And that's kind of what you have to do when it's this late into a game. Everyone can afford that goal, typically. Here's, here's, here's a question. And uh, the Artemis is down about 2,500 gold, right? She's bought 13 wards. Let's assume they're all regular wards. You're talking 600 gold. Well, let's say worst case scenario, that's 1,000 gold-ish in wards. 
putting herself even further behind. Is that a problem? I don't think it's too much of an issue considering that she already has the rage online and combining that with Artemis' passive will give her enough crit and damage in a team fight to be relevant. She's been leading the wards place category virtually all game. Has that been keeping her behind before the rage came out? I, I don't believe so. I, really, it's just been Lizer got so much farm from the get-go because he wasn't splitting waves initially with his right. support. Having Tyler K roaming the map is really what made the difference. Portal Demon about to spawn real quick. I think that answers the question, is there such thing as buying too many wards? And I think the answer is very clearly no. Portal Demon half HP already. Null and Void trying to deal with it. Oh, the Jingu Bang a little bit off the mark, but now it's picked up by Compromise. Doesn't have the gall to stick to it, however. And they're returning to get chased off of their objective. Nice moves coming out by Bane. That shred though, from the soul and the current is spooky. They, yeah. Null and Void have to be on the lookout because if they are not hovering these objectives, they are losing them in the blink of an eye. Tyler here, trying to zone out while the out of range basics go onto the objective. Players just sort of toying with each other. Daimyo finding some farm there on the right side. OP USB will kind of do the same. 30 minutes on the clock. Nine to three, null and void the team behind. Has six more kills than Era Eternity. But Era up by about 3,000 gold. This next play is make or break. Despite the fact that null and void are down, they're certainly in this fight. Era Eternity looking for the objective. The portal demon, less important. The team fight, the most important. The next time that I see Compromise drop a trap and Tyler K uses his Geb Shield on himself to cleanse it, I want to see null and void go in. Yeah. Because then that game shield is down it's and down. they have more opportunity. Portal Demon re released. And again, Null and Void. If Compromise stick to this, I mean, it seems like a bait from Era, but I say take the bait. I say take the bait every take single the time. Bait. There's the there's the Geb cleaning out. He didn't use his shield this time, though. Just kind of ate that trap damage. But Null and Void, they're just so hesitant. They don't want to make the first move, but sometimes it's okay to. This is this is what happens when you're playing against the more established team. Era Eternity is the SCL team. Null and Void coming out of the Challenger division. They're, they're not trusting their instincts. There's the Geb Shield. 50%. Look at that shred. This is where Null and Void need to go in. Look for the Portal Demon or the team fight. T Tyler already low, but a huge Geb Shield helping him out right there. Artemis looking for overpowered USB. Everybody in blue, about half HP. Null and Void should take the, the Portal Demon right now. And Era Eternity don't have the same kind of healing, but Do Null it. and Void, they're panicking so much. They're so concerned about the re-engage from Era Eternity, even though the Geb Shields and the Cleanses have all been utilized. This is the commit. It's okay to risk objectives. They need to go in. And the Portal Demon is so much less an important objective. It's 100 gold per player. But perhaps most importantly, which is why I'm saying just do it, when you take the Fire Giant away from the opposition, now you start getting pelted by that debuff that makes you do less damage. The Portal Demon, he's too little. He doesn't have that. He's not big, he's not big enough to have that debuff yet. Just take him. Just go for it. Null and Void. Waffle it a little bit. They are just ensuring that Era isn't at least securing this portal demon, but everybody from Era is more than happy to just back heal Lob. I mean, Lizer's even gone to the opposite side of the map. He's potentially trying to sneak out a Gold Fury by himself. Not going to be able to, though. Morgan is there to deter him a little bit longer, but with only one shell remaining for Era Eternity, the secondary shell is going to be back up with the way that this is going. Gab Shield on cooldown one more time. Null and Void not going for it. Sounds like we've got a moment or two to talk, so I want to ask you the question that everybody in chat likes to spam. Rat, no, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Titan's Bane and Executioner. Question. Well, hold that, hold that, hold that. Half HP on the Portal Demon. Then there's the jump in from Rogue T. Stunned out immediately. Tusky is coming out. Trouble as Lizer takes down Bane. Big play for Era Eternity as Null and Void don't want to pull the trigger. They're getting punished for sitting on their hands and not taking advantage of a good situation. They had the better team fight, or at least they had the opportunity to run out. Lizer just absolutely fragging everybody, picking up the double, double kill. Triple. Could be the triple, and it's there. Big play by the Goatman. Deicide, all five players done. 
And they're at Tony. Get, look at this play. They're picking up the little guy and the big guy at the same time. Can make up their mind. Finally drop the portal demon. Go for the fire, daddy. And it's all Era Eternity. Eight kills in total. And they find themselves up, what is that? Almost 5,000 gold. It's fine to play safe, but Too when safe. you're hesitating to that extent, we already saw it once from Nolan Boy. They had four members killed from Area Eternity. They went into the Portal Demon with only a balloon to contest. Sure, okay, that's fine and dandy. Play it passive. Uh, that I don't mind. But when you play it passive after forcing out a team fight where the enemy team used at least four ultimates, plus one of their shell actives didn't have... Two of their shell actives, excuse me. Yeah. There was only one shell remaining at that point, but... It's just, it's just so much pausing. They, they just did not feel confident in themselves to be able to win that team fight, and I cannot figure out why these teams tend to hesitate so much. That, that's the problem is we saw a number of times Era Eternity, they take the Portal Demon down to about 20%, and then they leash it, and the Artemis with Lifesteal and Critical Strike starts basic attacking it. I say five basic attacks and it's dead, if that many, and no compromise still backs off. That is just an issue for the guys on Null and Void. They can easily take that portal demon, allowing them to back, come back into the team fight nice and clean. Instead, Air Eternity are the ones that turn things on their head and take every objective. Just rough stuff for Null and Void. This is a team that looks pretty clean. Null and Void are playing pretty nicely. But those are the things that have to change. It doesn't matter how good you are at pushing your buttons. If you can't stick to a game plan, hesitation leads to devastation. That's why Null and Void are down over 10K. Null and Void are just eating poke for free right now. I mean, they even have the Terra sustain, and they're still just so hesitant about whether or not they should go in, whether they should commit. And now they're going to lose all of their objectives for it. Well, at least all of their towers. They still have a possibility to defend their phoenixes. Soul and Kern, though, those are two guys that I don't want to see. You brought it up early. Executioner, Titans, Bane. Why? Hold that thought, though. Rogue trying to make something happen. Already going into that back line. Yeah, Bane in trouble. Here's YC, and he's going to bring Rogue down about half HP. Zigzag is good, but Thorns hurts him. So Daimyo going to jump out on the backside. There's a little bit of damage coming out from Sir Duckbot. Knock up is strong. I like the change for Morgan into the Hunter to keep everybody at bay, but it's just for the moment. Now the jump forward from Null and Void, pushing players off of the Phoenix, and they're gonna trap one. Overpowered USB gets caught, and he goes down for the count, number 11 for NNV. Successful tower, or Phoenix defense, excuse me, by the Nolan sprint, Boyd. And the, the sprint. sprint. They want to keep going. They're being aggressive. I love this play. I don't know if I love the timing of this play. Lizer, two shots. The assassin, but shots to no compromise on the left side of that team fight, taking out the mid lane mage. And I think that's the more important kill. The Serket can die, but Sir Duckbot, a part of the tower killer. See, that's actually the opposite of what I was anticipating there. Nolan Void, they, you have the successful Phoenix defense. You know that your composition is really strong as far as winning the team fights overall. They've just kind of been eating it. Yeah. But that was, it, it went from too little to too much. Yeah. Like they I don't need to commit there with a sprint. <laughs> I, I get you want the kill onto the soul. That's an important priority pickoff. But that's one of those chases that didn't need to happen. I like, like I said, I like the play. I just didn't know about the timing. That to me is one of those plays that, as, as a as a as a broadcaster or like a, if I'm rooting for NNV, I'm sitting there going, "That was bad," but you're thinking fine, like you finally are on the right train of thought. I think that Nolan Void realized that they they sat around in their hands too long and Compromise they needed to saved make a play. It. Compromise oh, yeah. saved that so hard because if he doesn't find the kill onto Sir Duckbot, Lizer's wiping his entire team. But he does. And so they're able to get out for it, but I, between just Duckbot getting a little bit too split from his team, I can't imagine that to happen too many more times. Tyler K on this Geb has been quite a problem, but it could actually be Herp in a little bit of a tight situation, able to work his way out of that one. Overpowered, I'm pretty sure, just stole away his speed buff. Looks like it. Speedy man. And as we're on the subject, we were we we've started to talk about it, but the uh, the executioner and the and the Titans Bane not top DPS as per everybody's spreadsheet, but 
the, the the passives on both of these items negate each other, which is the main gripe that players have with it. However, Titan's Bane gives you that structure damage that you desperately need whenever you exactly. offer these crit builds. So nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's that's the difference between in theory and in practice. The Fire Giant already down to half HP. Anybody from Null and Void? Anybody from Null and Void? Nobody near the objective as they're being successfully zoned out by the two warriors on Era Eternity. Well played by the front line of EE. And now the Fire Giant. We'll see the guys push up on the right-hand side. The waves are pushed, so it's going to buy Nolan Void uh, a little couple of seconds. Yep. Pretty much since all the waves are pushed in their favor. It's going to be Era Eternity working up the right-hand side first, going for the Fire Giant side, Phoenix. If they find the picks and the Phoenix off of this siege, then they're able to take a second, potentially even a third Phoenix. And the way we've seen things, Null and Void, I don't think they're going to give up to... Oh, actually, if Bane finds himself already this low into the ultimate, Lizer just letting him go for it. There's the dash on the backside from the support, but Bologna a little bit too deep. There's the pig ultimate, and Duckbot takes down YC. One down on the side of the defense. Pushing forward, it's gonna be two. Great ultimate by Duckbot, gets the double kill for the soul. Down goes the Phoenix, and Taco, I think this is game. I, I think you might be right. It's gonna be Air Eternity pushing in all that damage onto the Titan. No ultimates really left to try and defend for Nolan Void. Compromise trying to shove out as much damage as possible, but Duckbot's got the right mentality purely on that Titan. Same can be said for Lizer, cleaning up no compromise in the process. And that game's going to be Era Eternities. One win for Era Eternity, one loss for Null and Void. That one was actually a lot of fun to watch. I thought that I thought that they had a chance, but not quite going to be able to come back as Null and Void. I, I think that Null and Void actually did have a really solid opportunity to win that game, just not enough experience to close it out. I mean, time and time again, we see that being the issue for these challenger teams mm -hmm. in comparison to the ones who've had the chance to compete in the pro leagues. So that's going to be their ultimate downfall, not capitalizing on the little victories to add up to the big one. Lizer on the goat man was able to really bring the pain. We saw the hesitation coming out from Null and Void, and Lizer, none in his, in, no hesitation whatsoever. Excuse me, he's able to pick up one here and then continue the team fight even further. Did he get hit by that twice? Just an arsenal of pain, and I believe that might have been a double, <laughs> a double tuskied uh, ultimate coming through, Beauties of Morrigan. But realistically, Lizer's positioning was absolutely flawless on this Kerninos. He had the front line that he needed, ensuring that he was always staying behind at least one member of his team. And the times where he knew that he had the open avenues to play aggressive, he was going all out there. Yeah, very well done by the guys on Era Eternity, playing like they want to keep their, SPL, their SCL spot. Excuse me. Null and Void have to be a little bit more proactive but at the end of the day, I think the strong front line of, uh, of ERA was certainly one of the big things that kept their players off of uh, the, the go button. So nice to play right there. Two games down. We've got some more to remain. Stay tuned for more relegation.